Hey guys, today we're talking about the best budget media creation setup you can get for video or audio. And you're going to be basing the computer on a Mac Mini, either an M1 or an M2. I'm running an M1, it's still totally awesome. And it's going to give you the best price performance if you don't want to like build stuff or learn Linux. Uh, yeah, you can make better things with Manjaro and a custom rig, so maybe I'll do another video of how I did all that. But if you just want something to get work done, this is the best idea. Uh, so you're going to start with the base model. And it's important to buy M stuff. If you're using Apple, don't. Everyone's just dumping Intel things on Craigslist or Kijiji now. Don't pay more than $400 for anything Intel, no matter what it is. So sorry for all these people that bought three or $4,000 laptops from Apple that are all i7. Um, they're not worthless, but Apple's going to age them out where they're eventually stopped doing updates and their focus is not on Intel anymore, period. So don't put your money there. Uh, so just remember, it's not a PS5, but it is a integrated SOC so that numbers you're used to for Windows won't need to make as much sense, uh, but it is perfect for work. Let's look at, so you want to get, oh yeah. This doesn't make a ton of sense to do the M2 Pro. Um, I would actually just buy two M2s and then network them and then do this, use the second one as offline render machine. But uh, if you're thinking about this, just watch a bunch of YouTube about the Mac Studio versus this. This is already over our budget, so we're not going to talk about that. So you're going to pick the base model, and then if you just need a computer, uh, 8 gigs is totally fine. If you want to do video or 3D, uh, get the 16 gigs. I mean, using 16 gigs since the M1 Mini basically came out, and I've never gone over. Keep in mind, you can never upgrade this. You're just buying a slab of a machine. I'm sure there's a way to open it and desolder it, but come on. This is not that kind of video. Uh, in general, I try not to buy HDs from Apple. Uh, so I've been running this option for quite a while. And I just use external storage for anything I need. And then... You really don't need to take 10 gigabit Ethernet unless you like live on top of a fiber channel that's connected to the internet. Uh, if you're trying to build a data center, like the 8 gigs, and this would probably be a great server. But if you're doing that, you don't need to save space. You can just build Linux machines. And... This is what you're going to get. So the first issue you're going to run into is USB. So my keyboard and mouse are actually on separate USB inputs. Uh, so the first thing I had to do is get a USB 3 hub. And I just went with something like this. I got a switch uh, so I could switch between two computers just because I have a Windows machine too. But uh, it's not really necessary. You could buy any. 3.0 hub. Now keep in mind, generally this is not going to support charging unless you get one that has a separate power supply coming in the side of it. Uh, so that means you can't run small external hard drives off of this. But what I do is I plug in this to one port and then I have the keyboard, mouse, printer, webcam. And then if I need to put a USB key 
uh, put the USB carry the external hard drive in here. So just think about how many devices you actually use and buy a hub that's appropriate for that number of things. Keyboards and mice you should never buy used. That's disgusting. You might as well lick a toilet. As people touch their face, touch the keyboard, never wash their hands, touch the keyboard over and over again all day. Any kind of hand grime is going to go in that keyboard. So if you want an Apple keyboard, just get the basic whatever you need. Uh, you don't need Touch ID or any of that stuff. Why you want the Apple keyboard is these... This will actually work, the shortcuts. Uh, I have like 10 keyboards, none of the shortcuts work. <laughs> the only thing that works with Mac is key cross. Uh, not that, not Epo. Uh, so just go through and find, make sure it says Mac in the description. They're pretty great. Only computer friends love these key crowns. And they can either get a wireless or wired. I still use wired keyboards. Uh, just because. Okay, monitors. So generally, if you have time, is you want to look on Craigslist and KGG for used Apple cinema display monitors. Just keep in mind uh, you have to show, get them to show you it working and play video because that'll show up if there's like green damage in the video or dead pixels and stuff. You are starting to be able to buy new monitors for around this price, but the Apple Cinema monitors are just still like a way better quality. But again, they're used, so you don't really know how long they're going to last. And you will have to buy an adapter because a DVI won't hook up to the thing. So you'll need a DVI to Thunderbolt or something like that, depending if you buy a or DVI to HDMI. Secondly, I'd recommend these Dell Ultra Sharp monitors. Um, they're all good and usually much cheaper than the Apple stuff. The Apple cinema display tends to retain its value somewhat. Um, this is not necessary. Okay. If you want to buy new monitors, generally for work, uh, I like these Asus Eye Care. And you can buy them in 24, 27, or 30. Or you can pay $100 more for the white one, which I did just because I have a white keyboard and a white desk. Um, that's. I didn't really realize I was paying that much more. <clears throat> but it looks cool. Uh, or you can, yeah, so 27. It's actually cheaper than the 24-inch white one. Ugh. Or you can go up to 32. And then just make sure you're buying stuff with ports that the mini has so it does have HDMI or if this is going to be the second display make sure that your hub has a, one of those two things okay moving on we only have a 250 gig internal drive so what are you going to do about that so the cheapest thing to do is iCloud so here's the iCloud pricing. This is what I do. I just got 50 gigs for, I think it's two bucks a month in Canadian, something like that. Or you can go up to this two terabytes. So the advantage to this is Apple's responsible for your data. Uh, I've never had any issues. Just understand it's got to upload. Right, um, so if you're trying to upload like 50 gigs or something, it's going to take like eight hours or more, depending on your home internet connection. Uh, we'll come back to this discussion point later. 
So your other option is to get like an external toaster. It's just like a nickname for these things. And then you're going to be, for this stuff, uh, USB 3 is the only kind of things you should look at. There is Thunderbolt storage, uh, but it's not worth it for your price point. Um, unless you work at like a advertising agency. And then these drives, so like below one terabyte, it's not worth it. Above two terabytes, sorry, below two terabytes, not worth it. Above two terabytes, not worth it. So two terabytes is the sweet spot for buying drives. <clears throat> Whatever you're doing, make sure it's they're not 5,400 drives. Uh, so if you're doing local storage, you'd buy two of these, put it in one of those, and then in Mac Disk Utility, which you find in Applications Utilities Disk Utility. You'd put them both in there and you'd format them both as HFS plus, not APFS. APFS is only for solid state. So then you have two, I should have just plugged in my read. Let's pretend these were our two matching drives. Then I would choose RAID Assistant, and I want to choose this mirrored. So what it means is however much storage you buy, in this case two terabytes, uh, each will be like a copy. So even though you have two drives, you're only going to end up with two terabytes of storage total, because it makes a perfect copy of that on each. Uh, so the advantage to this is you're in control of your storage. It's faster than iCloud. And when you're done, you just take the pair out, label them, and then that's becomes cold storage. So you have like a permanent copy of that stuff. I guess you could say hard drives last five years, something like that. Um, the disadvantage is like you can drop them. <laughs> I don't know. They're like local, right? So if you like knock them off your desk and that kind of stuff, or if you need your data and you're like traveling, things like that stuff. So if we look at this price point, every time you fill two terabytes, it's going to be double that. It's like 150 bucks a tax. If you go back to the iCloud, um, this is like $200 a year. So, and that's it. Like you're not getting more than two terabytes. So you just got to think about like how much data do you generate and how much do you need backed up? Okay. Mm. All right, so I was going to talk about Thunderbolt. So if you need two monitors, um, I bought an older one because I wanted VGA. It does get crazy hot, though, um, so maybe I wouldn't recommend. I have a QEMU one. Even if it's not under load, it gets, like, insanely hot, so just make sure it's not touching anything else. Uh, so you just want to find... Generally, USB-C and Thunderbolt 3 are considered interchangeable. Uh, make sure that whatever you're buying says Mac in the description and check the reviews to make sure that someone said it works with their computer. Like whatever computer you have, try and find someone that mentioned that. Uh, one of the things I found with the external Thunderbolt docs, you're still not going to get two monitors or three monitors. Um, so even though I might have two video ports, you're only going to get one display out of it. There is one that says it supports three, but I don't believe it. Okay, so let's talk about... So this is... The first storage option is just getting iCloud. Second is a pair of these in one of those. 
So I just don't keep anything almost at all other than like when I'm working on that day on my Mac mini hard drive and everything else goes on that that I'm not actively using. And then things that I don't care about, I'll just have on like an external two terabyte that I have on the USB three. But none of my work goes on there. So just think about like, is your work worth $150? Um, but I think it's like a game or whatever I'm downloading that'll go on that other drive that it doesn't matter if it breaks because it's not my work and replaceable. Okay. You could also plug your, if you want extra USB three, you could also be plugging your hard drives into that. Uh, just be aware of like power draw. So if it's something powered like this, it's okay. Uh, if it's just like a little dinky one, it might not generate enough power to draw over there. It'll look like your small hard drive is failing. Okay, let's talk about NVMe. So the first thing, Apple M2 and M.2 are totally unrelated. This is just an existing product name that came out before M2. It's just a kind of hard drive. So instead of a big honky hard drive, uh, it's like a pack of gum size. And uh, you have to be very careful about whether you're buying NVMe.m2 or just M2, M.2 SSD. <coughs> because some hubs won't support NVMe and some will. So uh, I just for testing, I bought one of those and threw it in one of these. And then you just have like this little thing uh, that sticks out in the back of your mini. It was like cheap for an experiment, like 150 bucks, but it's pretty unnecessary. Um, like, yeah, I can copy 30 gigs in like two minutes or something like that, but it's, it's really not necessary for any kind of normal work unless you're doing like Unreal 5. And then just don't buy a Mac. It's kind of, I did get it to run, but it's not worth it. Oh, let's talk about hubs before we talk about this. Okay, so let's say you do want a hub. So you have a lot of choices now. Uh, you just have to think about what do you actually need. So the base hub, I think they're like $70. It just has USB on it and nothing else. So that would stack under your mini like this. Then one up from that, you can get uh, a hub that has just M.2 or a hub that has 2.5. So you have to be very careful looking at the descriptions because they might all look the same as this and make sure it actually says that in it. And some do not support this NVMe. They only support that from when I was looking through them. So this is like about $150 usually. Then if you go up to $200, you can get all of that on the front, this in the middle, and then uh, video ports. Now this likely will be need to be powered externally too. Uh, but now it's like two hundred dollars, so it's just a clean version of uh, the sixty dollar thing. This it does make a big mess on the back of your computer if you don't care about that. Uh, that's it for that stuff. And then if we just want to talk about, oh yeah. So it's generally cheaper to buy this kind of SSD than to do the M.2. And this is more than fast enough for any media work that you're doing. Uh, so just look at your price points and like try and 
calculate how much data you actually need. This doesn't replace the mirror stuff, but if you use a combination of a large drive in the hub and iCloud, that would at least give you some kind of backup protection. Uh, just don't trust these. <clears throat> any individual, any individual hard drive will fail eventually, right? Uh, because these don't have any physical moving parts, there's less chance, uh, but it's still possible. Okay, moving on to stuff that I just like to work with is the Contour Shuttle Express. Contour Shuttle Express. There's also a pro one, but I don't like it because it's small. It's smaller. And like I said, I have a big hand. I much prefer being able to just put my whole hand on that. Uh, so this is for editing, sorry. And you can also, there's shortcuts for basically every program, Logic and Ableton and all that stuff. And you can set up the keys. So this is your jog, sorry, it's probably motion sickening. The middle is the jog shuttle. And then you can program those keys for in and out, all that stuff. Okay, if you're doing music or film, you need monitor speakers. Uh, so this monitors nothing to do with the screen. It's studio reference monitor. So it's exactly this flat spot, flat response curve or near flat. So when you are making something, it doesn't get colored by the speakers. Uh, I have these, I think, or a version of them, and I love them. They're great. I've spent a large amount of money on monitors in the past, and I uh, just like these. I mean, like Yorkville and all those kind of things, right? These are good. They've got Bluetooth, or you can plug them directly in. These are probably somehow better, but I don't know because I don't have them. I spent hundreds of dollars on it, like $300 headphones and stuff before, not $600 one. But now I just buy cheap ones, I don't care as much. These are pretty good. Uh, Why well, I like these, they have a guitar jack and a headphone jack. Um, you can plug one in each side so you can like do physical gear equipment and have a, that being kind of monitored in one ear and have your master mix in the other um, for it does work with both oh yeah this is the mic that I'm recording this with right now so headphones is a large topic so use your discretion then you generally want something small on your desk. Uh, so this is, I guess this is your best deal uh, with the most controls. So you got pads, keys, and knobs. If you need uh, sliders, uh, this is your other option. It's a mini lab three controller. Uh, what else, the Korg? Oops. Is it gonna get me down here? It was just personal preference, honestly. I just like the arterial gear. This is another good desktop option. Yeah, so this has all the stuff in it. Of course, there's a lot of options too, right? So, ooh, that looks nice. Um, personally, I just use this though, <laughs> the basic beat stuff. Uh, I like this because it's on my desk and it doesn't take a lot of space. They don't have anything for scale, but 
Uh, it's a good versatile thing. Oh, I was going to talk about that anyway. That was the next tab. Now, if you want to get rid of Adobe, this is the order I suggest it is Pixelmator Pro. It's super fast with the metal, which is the Apple 3D acceleration. And the keyboards are close enough to Photoshop that you can kind of be going in like a day or something. Um, then if you want to replace After Effects, Motion is pretty solid and it's cheap now. I think it's only like, yeah, 70 bucks. That might be an American. No, nope, it's in Canadian. Uh, this motion can do a lot now. And also Pixelmator and motion can interact. So it kind of replaces your Photoshop and your After Effects for 150 bucks. Or the reason why this whole conversation is based on the Mac Mini is getting Resolve, DaVinci Resolve to run in Windows or Linux can be a huge pain in the ass. Um, I had a total nightmare time trying to do it under Ubuntu with like a giant honker computer. And then I did a Mandra Arch computer just to run Resolve, just so I could use the CUDA. And then I got the M1 Mini and then the Resolve worked like right out of the gate. I didn't have to do anything. It wasn't like days of configuration. And the Handmaiden's tail the whole thing is being color graded on just like base minis with some RAM and DaVinci Resolve. So you don't need more than this to do like professional television. Whatever. Uh, this also has Fusion in it. Um, so you can also replace After Effects basically with Fusion. If you're serious about media, Long term, I'd recommend just go to Resolve. There's a learning curve, but it'll be worth it. What else would you need? Oh, yeah, and then if you need to lay out books, Fanny, I can't type. This is a great option. Again, it's a bunch of learning, but I have this on my iPad and you can start it on iPad and then take it into a Mac. I'd say like the only things that really work like that's GarageBand. Uh, yeah, for audio, I basically just use Reaper and GarageBand now. Whatever your audio workflow is just switch to Reaper. It's great. Uh, you can do everything in Reaper, but typically I do things in GarageBand first. So I could go to that GarageBand iPad, take it to the mini, and then finish in Reaper. Or like every program or any app I use, I always eventually bring it into Reaper. In conclusion, get the base M2, upgrade to 16 gigs, and then get iCloud. <laughs> it's like the cheapest, simplest thing. Whoop. One of these. Then if you want a clean desk, you can start looking into hubs. This is going to be another $200 plus another 100 150 depending on what you spend here. And then, uh, yeah, monitors generally recommend to go with the eye care because you're gonna look at it a bunch. And that's it. That was not it. I forgot <laughs> the tool that I use the most for video is ScreenFlow. Um, so for years I used Final Cut and Premiere, and then. I started using ScreenFlow, I think version four. 
something like that. And then I think I'm on ScreenFlow 10 now. It's I just get everything done super quickly. And the reason why you do want to move to one of these instead of a, an Intel computer. So I was rendering out video on a MacBook Pro like this with ScreenFlow. And so if I had an hour-long video, it might render out to like H.264, 1080, maybe that would take like 50 minutes or an hour, like something like that. When I got this and I had the settings proper um, in ScreenFlow, I can't sc capture ScreenFlow while I'm running ScreenFlow, but I'd show you otherwise. If you set it to Apple hardware in your export, my renders to H.264 went to like 10 minutes versus an hour. Uh, and then I was like totally converted to the M1 or M2 minis at that point. And they don't get hot. That's the other thing I should mention. Even they're like full load. The only time my mini ever got hot was when I was running an alpha version of Unreal 5 and it didn't have any processor throttling and it just started cooking the machine. So I just shut that off. But, uh, so really, this is kind of like my power trio pixel mater. I don't know, even just these two. All of the, here, this is my power trio. All images, I typically at some point will put through Pixelmator. All audio goes through Reaper. You could also edit video in Reaper, but don't. And then all video goes through ScreenFlow. This is just how, what I think iMovie should have been and Final Cut and all that stuff, but that's just my opinion. And then if you want to get into more professional tools, use Resolve for video, uh, motion for like more advanced animation. Like the cheapest way to animate is with Keynote. Um, you can just look for other YouTube videos about how to do that. And I was talking about book layout, I meant publisher. Uh, this is a replacement for Adobe Illustrator. This is replacement for Photoshop. Uh, I never use it though. <laughs> I bought all of these. And because Pixelmator has vector mode, I honestly just end up doing most of my pixel and vector work in Pixelmator Pro. And then I do use Publisher though, because uh, nothing's replaced Publisher. Pages, I just laid out a book in Pages and as soon as you need to leave the Apple ecosystem, it's like a nightmare. So, Okay, that should be like your total media creation end-to-end, -end, kind of no matter what you need to do for like the best price. That's the only things I didn't mention. Um, just the default YouTuber webcam is the this thing. 920, it's one of these. I don't remember, but anyway, one of those two is all you would ever need for YouTubing. That's like the default YouTube camera that every YouTuber uses, unless you're buying like a pro camera. And then microphones. The laziest thing you can do if you don't want to learn anything Ooh, what happened there? What did I type? Oh. Is just get one of these. I'm not going to say this is the best mic choice, but it exists and it's easy. You don't have to learn anything. You just plug them in. Uh, I do have one. I had some issues with it. Uh, but otherwise they're pretty solid and easy and high quality mics. You just point them at yourself and then just uh, make sure you set your input to the Yeti and that's it. I don't know why I say that's it. <laughs> this is a long discussion. Like, subscribe, and whatever that stuff is.
or argue with me in the comments. I've been using computers since Apple II, so you're probably wrong. <laughs> I've, yeah. Put your suggestions of things that you like that are also a low price point, which is the point of this video, is what's the cheapest, most effective media creation setup. Thanks.